The people, how y'all doing? I'm Kyrie Terrell. Welcome to the Pro Lover Show, where our goal is atypical love life lessons. Y'all might recognize Bull, but since we got a lady, <laughs> I'm going to let her introduce herself. Tina, I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. Thank you for having me. Of course, Tina. We're going to get into it. Who this? Hey, come on. I'm Kevin. You know, you know, Kevin Carr, your favorite connection advocate. My guy. Always a pleasure to be here with my people. In the building, in the building. We was having a little pre-game, pre-game talk about um, astrology, which which I don't believe in. But that's that's for another time, mm -hmm. man. Um, Tina, you married? I am. You 11 married, years. Kev? I am not. 11 years. 11, 11 years. years. 11 years. The, 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 awesome. So tonight's topic and why I go there is that I believe, I'm going to put this on me because mm -hmm. I know y'all can be scared sometimes. <laughs> right? Kev be scared. Kev be scared I'm sorry, sometimes. Kev be scared. 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 Oh, scared. Hold on. Hold on. Let, me, let me give them the topic and then I'll tell y'all why I can't be scared sometimes. <laughs> The topic tonight, <laughs> marriage should have renewal dates, just like your license mm -hmm. or I, I think some doctors got to go back and get, get some, some new training. I think your marriage should come to a point where both parties are entitled to look each other in the eyes and say, you've been doing what you're supposed to do. I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. Let's go ahead and renew this joint or ah, ain't really working. Let's go our separate ways, right? So I, I'ma just that's the topic tonight, but team, <clears throat> me and you real quick. <clears throat> don't worry, don't worry about him. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Put put a two shot on me and team. <laughs> um Kev like to play it neutral. Okay. Right? So Ooh. I'm all oh, because I'm, I believe in unconditional love. I do too. <laughs> I do too. See? Mm -hmm. No, forget that. Forget that. No, it ain't just that. It ain't just that. Kev is single. Okay. Right? That's what it really is. Okay. Right? So Kev be up here keeping all of his options open. As he should. Right? No, 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 no. I'm side with Kev. I'm, I'm about just to, saying. I'm about to, to get a two shot we was over here. About okay. I'm, I'm, I'm about saying. to get a two shot. I'm Listen, saying. we was talking about astrology earlier. I believe. You know, I'm also a Pisces. In keeping our options open. Not that we got a phone call in the middle of our podcast. There's somebody buzzing in. I don't know who. It's it probably <laughs> not, Brian, my other my other pod tech. Not that we got a phone call in the probably, middle of our podcast. That was one I had to take. He buzzing in. But anyway... It, watch, watch how you be talking. Okay, new, new, Mr. Neutral. That's okay. Kev's new name. So Mr. you're trying to tell me that Kev is not going to take a position either way. I don't think he is. We'll see. Okay. I don't think he is. We'll see. Okay. All right. All right. But she's been married for 11 right. years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's only right that mm -hmm. we that we go to her. Okay. And I, I just want to ask you that that question. I want a yes or no, mm -hmm. and then you can elaborate. Okay. Do you think marriage as a whole, everybody that's out here getting married, mm -hmm. would be better? If people knew they had four years and we got to go back to the to the courthouse and renew. You didn't have to add all the extra stuff. But I do believe that marriage needs to have a renewal period. Okay. All right. I agree. Speak <clears throat> on it. I, I feel like it should be every night. Every I, night. I feel like the pillow oh. talk, we need to be having significant pillow talk. Mm. I truly believe that I'm reevaluating each and every last step that you're taking towards the goals that you have for yourself and our shared goals. Mm. The way we parent our children, are your values and my values still in alignment? Are your actions in alignment with the words that you speak? I, I couldn't agree more. I'm, I'm going to pause you real quick. Halima, can you do me a favor and open that back door? I just realized my pod tech can't get in. I'm sorry. I had to do that. He was going to be standing out there waiting. Okay. But that's a crazy... You said significant pillow talk, mm -hmm. meaning we not just talking about dinner or what's going on at the Joneses' house or nothing like that. You mm -hmm. talking about what's going on with us. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. So, no, I wouldn't Nightly say renewals. every four years, but I'm definitely saying like we need to be intentional mm. about... Right. What are we pouring into this marriage, right, on purpose? And I also feel like even though I love you unconditionally, that individuals marry other individuals. Mm. And it's so important for you to love yourself unconditionally and for me to love myself unconditionally and not love you so much that I sacrifice my own goals, my dreams, and my moral fabric. So, so I got to rumble you a little bit. Oh, on, let's go. On the, on the nightly. <laughs> Right, I almost think that if you got to check in nightly, you're not in that good of a situation. Mm. Me, and, me and wifey, we check in, mm -hmm. right? Um, my, my fiance, we're to be married. We check in and we check in often, but nightly to me would say 
we talking too much. Mm, we, we, that's a thing. We talking too much. If if it is, because, and, and so I got I to gotta get to where I'm talking about. When I'm talking about a renewal, mm-hmm. when I say marriage should require renewal, I mean vows change, mm-hmm. right? I mean, when we first say I do, mm-hmm. there's, there's some differences in those vows. There's not the till death do us part, okay. right? It's cleaner than till renewal do we reevaluate, mm-hmm. right? It's something more sexy than that. Mm-hmm. But the vows set us up almost like a job does, okay. right? Here are your things that... <laughs> you want to evaluate. This comes, this comes from last week's <laughs> unconditional. You know my right. position, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Here's some things <laughs> that got to be working in our relationship okay. For us to get to year four mm-hmm. and me to re-sign that contract, mm-hmm. right? So that's why I say if we got to talk about things like that every night, we, we might not be meant for one another. So I guess for me, it's like, are we only going to wait for year two, three, or four to address things that you probably saw today? For me, I'm just going to say, like, Kyrie, if you have a goal, Kev, if you have a goal, right? And you're out here getting it, right? Mm -hmm. Like your actions definitely say, I have goals and I'm goal oriented, right? But then I'm looking at my partner and I'm just like, damn, we had dreams together. Mm -hmm. What did you do today to be able to achieve your goals? So, and and that's part of my point. I I gotta let Kev jump in because I feel like we've been dominating a convo. But part of my point is, should not that partner be displaying that those actions? To, to the point you don't have to have a talk and be like, well, what did you do today, right? I, I, I'm just performance-based. Mm-hmm. So I, I should be able to see it enough that I don't have to question you every night. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know about the renewal every night. I what, think, what say you I think at least what I've taken from what you said is that it's less about that conversation in terms of, are we doing this tomorrow? And it's more about, this is how we are in our relationship. Mm-hmm. Right, like this is how we conduct relationship with each other. Mm-hmm. Where we, so to your point in terms of those vows, I think we would do better as a whole culturally when we get in marriage. Is that we both we birth those vows because to death do us part. What does that really mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, if divorce rate, the divorce rate is what it is. <laughs> right. What does that? So what does those which, vows which really it's mean? It's kind of high. Which is, and so <laughs> we're gonna talk about that. Put mm-hmm. a pin in that. Right. One. Go ahead. And so now the vows. Goes back to what you were saying in terms of what are the goals in my relationship? How do we show up for each other? Right? How do we, you know, how do we interact and communicate? What are the, what are the uh, parameters and the boundaries that we set forth? Like, mm-hmm. if we start to birth our vows out of that, that's exactly then what I mean. Daily, mm-hmm. we are engaging that way, and we we're mm-hmm. living that way, so mm-hmm. we can kind of, at least that's what I take it from what you're saying. We don't necessarily have to have. Are we doing this tomorrow? It's just we already have kind of the guidepost of what our relationship should look like. Right, mm-hmm. right, and that's and that's more my my thing. When when and and you correct me if you're wrong if I'm wrong when I'm when I'm saying you know the 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 talk every night or the re, the renew every night. I personally think people don't govern their relationships the same way that they do their businesses. I or their was jobs. thinking the same mm-hmm. thing, Kyrie. Right? I was thinking the right. same thing. And let me just tell you, while you were talking, I was actively listening. Okay. But I was also thinking to myself, I was told by a multimillionaire that if you're not talking about your money every day, then you out here just talking about being a millionaire and that you're not going to be a millionaire. Mm. And, it, and, it, and it hit a little bit different for me. So if we're not addressing our marriage every night when my pillow, when I hit my head on the pillow, you hit your head on the pillow, it's not about questioning you about what did you do, but because I'm so busy, right? And you're so busy, this is our opportunity to be able to meet back up. Yo, babe, my day look like this. Yo, babe, mm-hmm. you ain't gonna believe what these people did X, Y, and Z. Right. Also, we are running businesses, right? Mm-hmm. So often if you're married, your union is a business, right? So sure. I want to know, like, what did our little employees do today that would be our children? Um, oh, did they not meet the expectations that we have for them? What are we doing for consequences? So, so you're you're speaking about um, you're speaking more about communication than renewal, in mm. my opinion, right? Mm-hmm. My my thing is, I agree 100 percent with with what you just said, mm-hmm. right? We go and converse about the day to day and the, and the kids and the business mm-hmm. and whatever we got in common, but that's just in the, 
the vein of um, of just communication, of just you know, um, I wasn't there, so what happened, okay. right? And 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 some of that is love making, right? Is mm-hmm. is let me love on you due to your absence, and let you love on me due to mine, right? Through communication. So I agree. I'm more so saying we talking divorce rate, okay. mm-hmm. right? We talking let's fix something, mm-hmm. right? Because since the dawn of time. The divorce rate has has been close to where it's at. There ain't never been no, oh, people ain't really getting divorced mm-hmm. this decade. Mm-hmm. And oh, case. now they are. No, mm-hmm. it's always been a high divorce mm-hmm. rate. So my thing and what we talk about on the Pro Lover is how can we do something atypical that helps people not be the statistic, mm-hmm. right? The statistic is we talking between 75 to 80 mm-hmm. percent divorce rate, right? Which is dumb high. But then... We not talking about separations. We not talking about you cheated. I cheated. I never got caught though. So I broke my vows. Mm-hmm. We just not divorced, mm-hmm. right? Happens all the time. Mm-hmm. So if you telling me that on average 70 something percent of people are getting divorced, mm-hmm. right? In a little bit of time, I think the number's like less than 3 years. It's like they not even last. Seven, it's seven years. So seven and years. And that's because the divorce takes so long to actually become legal. Part of the part mm-hmm. of the point, right? Then we gonna add on to that the percentage that we don't know, we'll never know of people who have cheated or people who just say, "I'm not spending no money getting a divorce. I'm just taking my ass here. Mm-hmm. You take your ass there." Or the people that live in the mm-hmm. same house but mm-hmm. sleep in different rooms, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What's that percent? Mm-hmm. You, I gotta feel like we in the nineties. But they be lying to their family and their friends, so oh, yeah, they're definitely going to skew the data when they take a self-survey. A hundred percent. Nobody feels comfortable saying, I sleep in a separate bed, I sleep in a different room um, from my spouse, because that's like you being in their home, and you know, their business is their business. Right. So I can't imagine that those are like the social media posts, like, got my own room. <laughs> no, no, that ain't <laughs> sexy. That ain't right? sexy. You know what I'm People saying? People ain't going to do that. So, right. so. Let's help the people in this way, right? Mm-hmm. I think we all can contribute. Kev, you started down this lane. Mm-hmm. What should the vows be, mm-hmm. right? Let's think about, and y'all that are watching, let's think about being accountable. Mm-hmm. Let's think about, I want to walk down the aisle mm-hmm. with somebody, right? What are the things that I'm going to agree to do for you, with you, about you, for the next four years, we're going to put ourselves, that's four right there. We're going to put ourselves in a world that marriage has a four-year renewal. Mm. Let's put ourselves there. Let's get rid of Till Death Do Us Part. Let's get rid of Richard Boyd. I'm not signing up all for the four-year renewal. Stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, you ain't signing no, up. I don't. So can I just say, when when you were talking about, like, okay, T, you're talking about, like, checking in and mm-hmm. maintaining effective communication in our relationship and making certain that we're on the same page. So then I was like, oh, you want to be literal about renewal. Mm -hmm. I do think it is important to renew your vows, like literally. um, And I would say every 10 years. All right, so you talking about something else. You talking about Tina. Tina, (laughs) she she married for 11. She talking about something else. She talking about something else. We move into a world, Uh right? Where Kev ain't getting married because he's not accepting right. the four the four years. I'm not opposed renewal. to it. I don't. You I can't just, get married, Kev. I just don't see how it how it affect how it impacts marriage. Mm-hmm. Like, right, like how to, because marriage is just an agreement, and so but your license is an agreement, right? But whether your license that, is actually a privilege. Uh, it's a privilege. Yeah, it can but, be taken away a, yes. to, the, to marriage, the point of a privilege. It's a privilege. Marriage is an agreement between, in this, let's look at, use that as two human beings. Mm-hmm. We made an agreement to be in this relationship. The gr- agreement isn't the issue, it's the relationship that we create. Mm-hmm. So if we only address the agreement and don't address mm-hmm. the relationship, it don't matter because the next four years when we marry somebody else, we're going to end up in the same boat. And so what I'm saying is. But, but you might not. My. My thing, I'm not opposed. If somebody said, "Hey, we got a four year renewal period," I don't see how that can hurt. But my overarching thing would be to: I just think marriage should be harder to get into yes. and easier to leave. Yes. Hey, I'm not psychic, but watch what I know about you. You've been wanting to start a podcast for some time now, but there are five barriers that have been preventing you from getting started. Number one, you don't have anywhere to record it. 
Number two, you don't know anything about cameras and audio. Number three, you have no one that's gonna help you every week. Number four, you have no idea how to distribute your show once you get it done. And number five, it costs too much. No, no, I promise I'm not psychic. I just started a full service podcasting studio because I heard about people like you. It's called Potty Time. We have 18 interchangeable sets for you to choose from. We have dedicated pod techs that are gonna do the work. They're gonna set it up, they're gonna record, and they're gonna edit while you're here. We also have administrators that can do your distribution for you. We can upload the show to YouTube, Spotify, other platforms of your choice. Come on over to pottytime.com now. We can't wait to turn your podcast idea into a real show. You was dancing the whole time. <laughs> because if we did put more intention and really focused on what we are creating, mm -hmm. then we would see better, healthier mm -hmm. relationships and we wouldn't necessarily have to have these conversations as to... It brings me back to the vows, though. Mm -hmm. So you can at least agree when you say harder to get into, there's, there should be something different we're agreeing to, even to the point of Richard for Poor, Death to His Power, whatever. What do these things mean? I agree. I just, I think the, the import, the, it's vital that the vows are great, but we have to have the ability to live up to those vows. So what are they? That's the, that's the question so that I want to the first thing the I started you, thinking, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe today's vows are valid. And I'm going to tell you something. Mm -hmm. You're talking about vows from a religious perspective. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't think that people recognize the importance of writing their own mm -hmm. vows. 100%. Mm -hmm. And the way they imagine their wedding day is very much the pastor, the preacher, mm -hmm. the priest giving them the vows to repeat after exactly. them. Right. And I honestly don't even know. Like, I know, like, I did what I wanted to do at my wedding because I don't ascribe to religion. Mm -hmm. But for the people who literally grew up in certain religious sects, they can't see past that. Mm -hmm. So the right. fact that the pro-lover is putting it out there, it's important to write your vows because now I have a personal stake in the things that I said I was going to do mm -hmm. and uphold. It's not just... So like tradition. You did it before. So mm -hmm. what were some of the vows? Because I'm tired of you and Kev dancing around this question. <laughs> some of my vows New were, vows, please. Yeah, some of my vows were to honor, to respect. Um, so don't don't go too fast. What do you mean by, by honor? honor? Talk to our so people. So I always tell young people, I do a lot of work with youth, and I always tell young people, you know that you're living a righteous lifestyle when you make the same decisions in front of an adult authority figure mm -hmm. when they're nowhere around. Okay. Right? So honor to me means I carry myself the same way when he's present, when he's not present. Great That's one. what honor looks like for me. Great one. Respect looks like, I mean, like common sense for me. Respect is, <laughs> I mean, I don't name call, right? Um, so it's not necessarily me respecting my marriage or me respecting him when he's not around, but when I'm mad, right? Mm. Like, do I still respect you when I'm saying that ain't what I'm having? That's not what I'm doing here, right? right, right, right. Um, this is not acceptable. I don't mm. like this. Mm -hmm. Do I say it in a way that if he feels respected when I'm asserting a boundary of right, mine? Right. No, that's dope. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Kev, new vows, Kev. <laughs> New vows. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give mine's last. What, what, what should we be I, talking about? I think the vows uh, they should be case by case base. What works for my marriage and relationship won't work there for you yours. Mm -hmm. No, in general, mm -hmm. that, that, I think to, to your to your point, the problem with marriage is because we going into it. <laughs> we going I'm gonna into get you. it. Get you. Listen, Every time you do this, I'm gonna we get going you. into it with such a general mindset, unconsciously, where. We not even operating off of a script that we actually created mm -hmm. in terms that's, of that's relationships. That's what we're trying to do right here tonight, Kev. But my vibes won't be the same as yours. I know. I want to know yours. So he want to know what your are What? I don't know what my vibes is. I'm a single today. man. I don't know what my vibes is. Yeah. <laughs> that's why. I have no that's idea. Why. Kev, like, when I meet her. <laughs> when I meet her, we come up with it's the vibes. It's going to be unique. But in general, in a general sense, um, <laughs> in terms of they would be about how we communicate, right? Mm -hmm. Like, or when we have conflict... 
Is it do, instead of seeking to win an argument, are we open to understand each other? Mm -hmm. Are we empathetic to one another? Mm -hmm. Am I willing and you know able to kind of see who you are and look through things from your mm -hmm. perspective? Like my mm -hmm. vows would lean in that direction mm -hmm. because that's what I want my relationship to look and, like. And I think there's I think there's a lot to be said about what you're saying. And I hope the I hope the the viewers are picking this up because here's what I'm picking up. Mm -hmm. Right, what I'm picking up is that. When you get into a relationship, ingredients are going to be present or not present. Come on right? in. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a young lady who you'll meet one day and hopefully want to marry. Right. right? She's not going to possess everything. So there's going to be some vows that need to be created for the boundaries that need to be fulfilled by you two. Right? What you mean? Explain I'm, it to me. I mean there's going to be... Let's let's just say there were three young ladies okay. that were suitors, right? You in your head, you would say, I'd marry any three of these ladies. Okay. I believe the vows necessary for each one of them is going to be different. Mm. And I think what you're saying is that until you meet that one lady and you identify what y'all do, what what's y'all dance. That's the things that you're going to want to speak about or not speak about. And I, and I say that coming from a place of where when I decided to, to get out these streets and, and, and become a, a, a husband mm -hmm. to someone, I also decided that I'm going to love her flaws. I decided that in order for me to stay with her... Mm -hmm. And to stay locked in, I had to understand that leaving only changes my problems. It doesn't exonerate me of problems. I'm not going to go and meet Miss Perfect now. I'm just going to be like, oh, I'm thank God she don't do what Tosh used to do. But she going to do her shit. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think the vows, that, that the way you speak of it is within, well, I don't know who she is yet. Right, so let's create those things together based on who our ingredients form. Yeah, it will be more. Let's create this relationship together. Mm. Okay, so it's less about who she is. It's just do we look and approach, and do we want relationship in the same type of way? Right, but it, I'm I, what I'm saying is that's why I said they're all suitors. So I'm saying get yourself past that. All three of them, these women are mm -hmm. that. They're that thing. Right? Do you all you look at life the same, you do all these different things the same, but there's gonna be some differences within those suitors. You know what I'm saying? That at that point you can start to say, let's construct our vows this way. It you. could even be yeah. in how how someone listens or comprehends, right? You you might say something super intellectual for somebody, but you gotta say it a different way for somebody else. Might not mean they dumb, but it's just a way that they communicate. Yeah, yeah, I get you. You I feel get what you. I'm saying? Yep. So for me, I'll, I'll talk about I'll talk about vows for me. We learned on the last show that um, my love is conditional, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and Kev's love is is not too conditional. Okay. Um, Kev gonna love you, baby. Mm -hmm. Kev is gonna. I love believe you, I can choose to love you um, unconditionally, <laughs> and I believe I can choose not to. Um, you know, you can love somebody and still leave, though. Oh yeah, for sure. Kev, okay. Kev so brought that up last love. week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he said that last week. Mm -hmm. um, but my thing is Kiss this, you on right? Your forehead on the way out. <laughs> you know what I'm ah. saying? <laughs> Bye. The door Come on. And still wish you well <laughs> in love and life. Come on. My love hasn't changed, but I love me way more. There, there you go. There you go. And and that's kind of the side that I'm on. That's that's why my love has conditions. Um, I will I will leave that ass um, if if that renewal ain't looking good in four years. Um, but I'm very I'm honest and open about that me, mm -hmm. me and wifey we check in we communicate she know what i need she know what i don't want um but my thing is this right i i believe that um i really believe that any union can work right if we can get past the point of i'm attracted to you physically um and emotionally yeah i feel like any union can work I feel like what what stops unions from working is effective communication. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 I say that because we live in a world where we have plenty of options. Mm -hmm. If if you doing your thing, if you attractive, if you you know you know upwardly bound, you have options. It just is what it is. Especially if you're a black man that's about something, right? Because there's a million black women that's about something, and it's like two guys, me and Kev. Ooh. So, 
So options is abound. You know what I'm saying, Kev? Well, it's um, me. Really. <laughs> I I'm, taking, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Just Kev, ladies. I do believe it's, me. it's about 11 um, women for every it's about a, one Yeah, man. it's, it's That's something crazy, up there. Right? Um, I'm metaphorically speaking, yeah. but, y'all, but y'all feel me. Um, the point I'm going to is that with those options come grass is greener, grass is greener. Everybody's thinking that grass is greener. Right, maybe not. Maybe I can't not the wait women. To say something about this. Maybe not the women. You got it. You coming up. You coming up next. Let me finish my point. Mm. The point that I'm getting to is we can start to to think that someone that we're communicating with something cannot be fixed with, right? And I personally think you just might not be using the right tool, right? It can be fixed, but you a have to want it mm. to be fixed, and that's a piece that people don't communicate about enough, mm-hmm. right? We've all been in those relationships where something just feel different. They telling me they want to be here, but something just, you not doing what you once did. Mm-hmm. And it always tumbles into, they don't really want to be here no more. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's been us. We, I've had the, the problem of being able it's to say- It's a lack of courage. I, don't, I can't tell her. Mm-hmm. I don't want, mm-hmm. So I'ma just behave, mm-hmm. right? Misbehave, mm-hmm. if you will, mm-hmm. right? But the communication piece- I've learned as I got older, could either fix it because you, you've been honest, or it could just set you free. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Come on, freedom. My, my number one thing in, on, on the vows piece is you have to communicate to understand one another, mm-hmm. right? I will look my fiance in the eye and say, I will communicate to understand you, and I will listen to understand you, mm-hmm. right? That's the number one thing, right? And and thankfully, I got a young lady that will listen and she will respond with action um, or respond with intellect and tell me it's not going this way and here's why. And I can respect that, right? Mm-hmm. Because I'm the same way, right? I'm going to tell you, like, you make a good point and then, you know what, damn, I could stand to, to, do, to do X, Y, Z mm-hmm. that way. So that's number one for me, mm-hmm. right? Number two is something that we always do, which is what we call fight not to fight. Right. And fight not to fight. It, it literally means we two different people. Something going to happen in this household that I'm going to want to fight you over. Right. <laughs> not, not physically. Yeah. Right. But I'm going to want to stand my ground. Our our governance in our household is fight yourself first. Right. And bring that to me in a way that. It's respectable, mm-hmm. right? Bring that to me in a way that I can digest, mm-hmm. that you not ah, da, 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 and all of that. Mm-hmm. We fight not to fight. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a vow, mm-hmm. right? And then make love with your words, right? That's really, really super important to me. And Natasha's a work in progress. <laughs> she's, she's working on making love with her words. Um, but that's a point that I always stress to people that are in relationships. What happens is you get close to someone. And then you become the closest person to someone. Mm-hmm. And then without thinking consciously, you're speaking to them in a tone that belongs to your day mm-hmm. or your girlfriend or the homies you just was with. Mm-hmm. And that energy don't belong to her mm-hmm. or him or whoever mm-hmm. we talking to. So my thing is when you think consciously, and here's the easiest way to do it. I tell this to Natasha all the time because she's a work in progress. <laughs> When you first met me. You know how sweet you were to me? And you thought I was him. (laughs) And you spoke to me a certain way. Now that I'm the closest one to you, (laughs) right? Like we just had an episode on the car the other day. She she was trying to order something. I forget what it was. And we might have just been at Dunkin' Donuts. We was. And the total was like 18 something. And she had like 17 in her app. And she passed it to me. I said, I said, baby, only our $17. It's $18.28. And she snatched it. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, baby. I said, why, why, why me? Why like, 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 what, what did, did I, I do? do? I, didn't, I didn't do nothing. You know what I mean? And she ain't want to apologize in that mm-hmm. moment because she's a prideful Taurus. <laughs> so what it. you trying to say? That's she's a, stubborn? As an insider. Oh, no, you don't believe I don't in believe it. in that. As an insider. But she's prideful. But she warmed up to it and she said, I apologize. I'm sorry. <gasps> oh, damn, he's cute. Who is cute? Nobody. Girl, let me see. Her new little boo thing. Girl, are you cheating on Mike? No. I mean, I was thinking about it. 
Why? Brie, the sex is bad. I need some excitement. Me and Mike only use the bedroom for the bed. See, that's y'all problem. Y'all need to be up on the kitchen table with it. Girl, shut up. No, what you need is a 20 day climax. What's, What's that? that? It's the new ebook by the pro lover. Justin and I just finished it, and when I tell you, we have not been able to keep our hands off each other. Every single page is a new spark. Look, that's his page right there. You can order it. To order the 20 day climax, visit theprolover.net. And she put the extra dollar on it and paid the joint, <laughs> right? But that's that's important to me. So that's that's my three, right? Let's communicate like to understand. Mm -hmm. Let's fight not to fight, mm -hmm. and let's make love with our words, okay. right? Let's be conscious about those things, right? Be ready. And if I, if I get to, if, if I get to year four, mm -hmm. and she's still snatching phones. I'm not You're signing that right renewal. There. I'm not, not signing it. You're, You're going to be right there. Nope. Okay. Nope. I'm going to be like, eh. So can I backtrack just a little bit? Backtrack. Because you said backtrack. so much. We rocking and rolling. Um, you had talked about being choosy. Mm -hmm. And you didn't say it like that. But I, I felt it that way. And what happens is we're always, not. it's not a man thing. It's not a woman thing. Mm -hmm. It's a human thing, right? Mm -hmm. The grass might be greener on the other side. There's a possibility if I commit to you, I might miss my one, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to miss their one, mm -hmm. right? So me and my husband, we had a conversation before we decided to be husband and wife about soulmates. Mm. And he was very upset to believe, to hear me say, I don't believe that you only have one soulmate. Mm. Talk I believe shit. that we are created by a kind and passionate and loving God, right? Talk it. So what if my soulmate is on another side of the planet? I'm just going to be lonely, mm. right? So I personally think that it makes sense, right? It, I want everybody to understand it's normal to not want to prematurely commit to one person in the event that I might miss my actual person. And then people will stay in the marriage for obligation because this person has mm. done nothing wrong to me. This mm. person has not wronged me. This person has not hurt me. But it was something about the energy, the exchange that I had with this other person. And now I feel sad because I am not able to even entertain mm. the possibility that that might be a soulmate. See, and I'm just married to like maybe my twin flame. She jumped, she jumping topics because you know. <laughs> but you talked about selection Listen. and you talked about being choosy. And I was over here like, you know, rocking back and forth a little bit because mm. I just wanted to jump in, but I didn't want to be rude. No, but, but so it, we, we live in a day and age where, you know, this is going to be a whole nother, whole nother topic. But um, I, I'm not in one of those relationships where I can't see what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What's going on mm -hmm. a little bit. But that's a whole nother Whole nother I'm shindig. here for that conversation. And, and one of the reasons why, you know, I'm, I'm, I believe I've met my soulmate is because this nigga just like me. Like, I never thought I would meet somebody who was just like me, right? Like, like we grew up the same. We, we got the very same outlook on, on sexuality and, and cheating or not cheating and soulmates. And all. It's, it's weirdly almost impossible for me to have met this young lady. You know what I'm saying? And and that's why I'm I I am where I am. But our beliefs align. You know what I'm saying? There was no arm twisting. There was mm -hmm. no well read this book and then mm -hmm. tell me what you think. There was none of that. It was always who the fuck are you? Well, <laughs> but who you who you're in relationship with is a reflection of who you are. Mm -hmm. Right? That's so it's thing. so it's no coincidence mm -hmm. that you are but I'm in mean, line. But the thing about it, Kev. And so we, we I'm a different type of nigga though, Kev. It's still a reflection of who you are. But it's like, a, it's, it's, a, it's that you're a different human being. Right. Women women not right? supposed to be like this. But see, it's not about gender. It's very much the spirit. Is see, it? this is, is, is just the physical is? shell. The spirit doesn't have a gender. So we we kindred spirits is what you're saying. I, I That's what now we are. that I definitely yeah. I think, in. like to, to your point I about believe soulmates, in that more than I do mm -hmm. I believe in soul connections. Mm. Okay, soulmates. So I think your soulmates are built on, and forged over time, mm. right? I think we can meet somebody that speaks deeply to our soul, Come but on, that relationship still has to be built. We still have mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. conscious choices mm -hmm. daily mm -hmm. when we when we in terms of actually building that relationship. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I think one of the things that we're experiencing is that we've been fed since we were young 
to from cartoons and fantasies that there's <laughs> right. this perfect person. Right. Mm-hmm. And so as a result, we're out and we're looking for this perfect person. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing. No, it's, it's you. No right. such thing. And the choice right. that you make. Mm-hmm. Whatever you build is right. what, you, what your yeah, ass like, is going to mm-hmm. track. And so but what happens is, is that we think there's this perfect person. And so mm-hmm. we have this idea of the person that we want to meet. Mm-hmm. And then when we meet people, we kind of like, <laughs> it's like stencil. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like you ain't, you ain't fit in all the way. Frame mm-hmm. Instead of, it's better to think about how do you want your relationship to be? Mm-hmm. How do you want to be in your relationship? Mm-hmm. And as you meet people, can we do this together? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And and it, it, funny you should say, right, when you, when you bring up the stenciling analogy, right, I said this to somebody the other day. When I met Natasha, she was the first woman I'd ever met who fit my mental image of my partner. I'm talking about at first glance, Mm -hmm. right? And never did anything to this date to move outside of that stenciling, Mm. to put it how you put Mm -hmm. it, right? And that was also like like different to me. And it, it sounds fucking freaky with even with me being me and saying something like that. But I'd been with you you name it type of women up until that point. I met Natasha when I was 38. Um and soon as I saw her, I was like, I wasn't like that's my wife, mm-hmm. but I was like, this woman fits an, an image for me like mm-hmm. this this woman feels right mm-hmm. at i'm talking about i came up the steps she was waiting i met her on doing a show i used to do a show called two one live when we were uh you know my new philly and we did all this different news stuff so she runs a travel agency i'm just giving you the background i don't know if you ever heard the story either, Kevin, mm-hmm. but i'm giving you the background so one of my producers had brought her on to talk about travel mm-hmm. and i come up the steps we was on the mushaloo mm-hmm. filming on mushaloo i come up the steps and i see her and I'm like, mm, okay, but I'm I'm you know president company leader leader of the company the whole nine, so I gotta hold my shit together. Mm-hmm. Cause one thing I don't do, and it's crazy, rest rest his soul, my mentor Kev Parker, I, I got in trouble for being all about the the chicks at work before, okay. right? And the way he explained it to me literally changed my life, mm-hmm. right? It was about perception, mm-hmm. right? Because I had bust my ass this night. I'm going off on a tangent, but the only thing that got back to him is I was in this bitch face and that bitch face, mm-hmm. right? And he broke it down to me and was like, you got to leave the women alone when it's work time if you want to be perceived like you you up there. Mm. And that stuck with me. So long story short. He's a good dude. Too. I come, yeah, mm-hmm. Kev was the best. I come I come up the steps and I already know, oh, at this, me and this lady need to have some, <laughs> some, uh, Can't wait to get some shenanigans yeah. uh, <laughs> need, need to happen <laughs> with me and this lady. So I do the interview, whole time, she don't know I'm feeling her because mm-hmm. I'm conducting myself. Mm-hmm. But when it's over, she lingered a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, the linger might be might be talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm walking down the steps and we talking. You know what I mean? Obviously, we, we engaged to be married now. But I say that to say, when you bring up the stenciling, that was the first time in my life my mm-hmm. outline mm-hmm. A- immediately was fulfilled. And not that I... I I wasn't looking for it, mm-hmm. but I had moved myself to a position where I was like, I'm going to try something I never tried, mm-hmm. which was be loyal to one woman. Mm-hmm. I never tried it. Been in relationships, mm-hmm. but I always was a, if it's yams to be gotten on the I'm side. I'm going to go get them. <laughs> I'm going to go get those yams. <laughs> it, it, that was the first thought in my mind. Right. And I thought it was okay. Not I thought it was okay. I learned it was okay. I went to therapy and talked to a therapist. She said, Kyrie, if you're being honest, these women are choosing you just as much as you're choosing them, Mm -hmm. right? So as long as you're not coming to my office telling me that you're lying to women and you're manipulating women and things like that, go for what you know, Mm -hmm. right? But I said, you know what? I never tried to at least be loyal, to at least say, hey, here's the lifestyle I want to live, but I want to be loyal to one woman. And I tried that with Natasha, and it's been nothing but up. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, It took some courage for you to be able to do that, though. Oh, yeah, 100%. And one of the things that I noticed is that while I'm not certain about who I'm going to choose, people are often like, but I'm I'm choosing. I'm in a selection process, but Mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you I'm in a selection process. I don't want to tell you what I imagine in my mind because you might 
leave. Mm. So I'm going to tell you what I need to tell you in order to keep you until I am able to make a commitment. Mm. So it really does boil down to do I have the courage to speak my truth and allow this person to stay or to leave? Mm. The courage piece is big Mm -hmm. because most people feel like they'll lose whomever they're with and they won't be able to replace that. Mm -hmm. That's most people's first thought where like you talk about being in a relationship for so long and just it it, it felt right. And then you meet that person that feels a little bit righter and stuff like that. I, I would advise everybody to understand it doesn't matter if you are holier than thou or you a straight up serial killer. There is someone for everyone. And there is someone (laughs) who will identify with you being Mm -hmm. the person that you are Mm -hmm. in a way that they say, where have you been? All All my life. Let's go to church tonight. And to be very fair, Kai, it's like somebody's for everyone. You know what I mean? Like we have the agency to choose. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to choose. The problem is, is that we that choose that or that our willingness to make that choice, like to your point, mm-hmm. takes courage. Mm-hmm. Well, th- what it comes down to is you have to choose to choose, right? You, you have to you have to get to, to that point <laughs> yeah, in that's your mind. Mm-hmm. Because that's exactly where I where mm-hmm. I got, mm-hmm. right? I was at a point and and it, it's crazy because I've spoken about this before, but not much on the pro lover, but on other on other pods. I got to a point where I felt abusive to women. Mm. And the reason I felt abusive was I was 35 to 38 right before I met Natasha. And I'm having it my way. I'm talking about I don't care what your profession, how much money you make and whatever it is. For some reason, I'm getting it my way with women. And it got to a point where this is why I went to therapy and I'm talking to different different friends and things like that. And it was it was my dog, Ebony. And, and the therapist I went to that shed some light on me. And what that light was, was I was at an age where women were, I need one. Mm. Mm. And, and nigga, you was high on the totem pole. You was attractive. You had things going for yourself. You don't mm-hmm. beat on women. You ain't got no record. You ain't, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I go to the gym. I had all of these qualities mm-hmm. That at my age group, it was slim pickings, mm-hmm. right? And I had never, right? We grow through different right. ages. When you when mm-hmm. you twenty twenty something, it's like, damn, I can't get one. What's mm-hmm. going on? Am I what I gotta do? Yeah. And you and you grow and you grow. So I felt it. I was like, yo, I don't have the same struggle I used to have. Mm-hmm. I walk in the room now, and I'm and I was somebody. I'm mm-hmm. building my new Philly, and people know me from that and all of that. I walk in the room and I'm I'm getting different types of love and I'm getting handed phone numbers and this and I'm like what's going on and I really they had to enlighten me and Ebony Ebony hates to give me any any kudos <laughs> so she goes nigga I, I don't want to tell you this but you somebody out here <laughs> like, like that's what the fuck it is these, these bitches is hot to try they trying they trying to the, mm-hmm. the, the snatch one. Mm-hmm. And and you got all of the things that they need. Mm-hmm. And I said, damn, this is what made me feel abusive. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm not there yet. So all of the, the performance that they're doing is really to like lock me down. Oh, I'm so glad that you said that. To, to make me a, a, mm-hmm. a, a theirs. Because yeah. they chose you, but they, you had not chosen had not them. Cho- I had not chose anybody. I had chose to have it my way. Mm-hmm. And then I said, the person that I am, right? And I always liken it to this, right? If I run into Kev on the street and we got whatever type of beef going on, if it got to go down and we got to fight, we going to fight, right? Kev's my size, right? Because <laughs> if, if he wasn't. If, if Kev was five <laughs> feet in a, a bean 25, he going to really, really had to take me there for me to fight Kev. Because mm-hmm. what do that look like, mm-hmm. right? The optics on it. I'm that type of dude mm-hmm. where it's like, I'm I'm not taking advantage of nobody. Mm-hmm. And I realized without me doing it purposely, mm-hmm. I'm taking advantage of these women mm-hmm. because they want something that they're never going to get from me. And they're performing in a way to get that, that I'm never going to reciprocate. Mm-hmm. And that was the mental switch for me. Mm-hmm. I said, Kai, you got to try something else. Mm-hmm. Right? And and I up to that point in my life, I had never experienced 
I'm sure you at that age, Kev. So you, I'm sure you you understand what yeah, I'm no, talking about. Exactly what you mean, yeah. It get to a point, and and it's probably you know it's it, it could be cultural because you know white men typically get married in their twenties yeah, or early thirties. I mean, 30s, some of it is, but some of it I found your energy is also just different. Yeah, like because as a man, you not like I, I learned this. Around the same time, I wish I knew. I wish I knew this in my if life. If I knew, th- if I yeah. knew then, <laughs> like what I, I know now. Yeah, like, right. I was talking to my man one day, maybe a couple of years ago. I'm like, damn. I'm like, if it's the first time in my life when I go out, I ain't chasing my dick. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And how good it feels, mm-hmm. and how much pressure is not on me. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just go out and just be. Mm-hmm. I don't need to meet nobody. I can just mm-hmm. be, enjoy life. I can have a conversation with a beautiful woman and just. It was great to meet you and walk yep. away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes that energy is picked up mm-hmm. and it is it, desirable. It's desirable yep. mm-hmm. because yep. it's not, you don't have that anxious, I'm trying to get something yep. from you yep. mm-hmm. when you're interacting with women. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's sometimes- also the evolution and ascension of self, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it comes with age, it comes with experience, yep. it comes with wisdom. It really is something to know thyself, mm-hmm. right? Um, you said something earlier too that I just felt I feel so compelled <laughs> to <laughs> respond to, right? When a woman or a man is choosing their partner and there's no reciprocity in that I choose you as well, it's one of the reasons why we have such a high rate in divorce. Mm. Because people are like, uh, I mean, love the one who love you back, (laughs) right? But it's something that tells me you're not for me and I'm not really Mm -hmm. for you, but you're so nice to me. You do everything. Why wouldn't I just want to be with you? Right. And Kev made the point earlier, I'm going to say it differently, but people are choosing marriage, right? When when you talked about what's this relationship Mm going to be and and marriage should be harder to get Mm -hmm. into and easier to get out of, I think people are... Affected by their age, mm-hmm. they're affected by their peer group, mm-hmm. right? They're affected by societal norms. I think right, and they get to the point where they're like, "Ah, I'm out here, and I don't got nobody." <laughs> so, yes, I do. I, I will. Yes. <laughs> Can, you know I what I'm Can I add to that? Can I add to that? Go ahead. Jump on it. So many young people are waiting for the wedding, mm-hmm. and I don't think that there is intentional conversation and differentiation between the wedding and the marriage. Right. Right? Because the wedding the, is a or party. the love. Right. The love. Like, mm-hmm. we, we forget first comes love, then comes marriage. Mm-hmm. But people talk about their wedding, but they don't talk about their love. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, how many times have we heard people talking about a wedding and they single? Right. I want this at my wedding. I want yep. that. Right. What are we talking yep. about? Yep. <laughs> right. With we, whom? Like, no conversation at all about how do we actually conduct this relationship Facts. in a sustainable mm-hmm. way. So right. now you know their goals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like a person who's talking about the wedding with no relationship automatically is telling you what they value mm-hmm. and what's important to them. Yeah. Right. What are they working towards? They're mm-hmm. working towards that wedding. So Don't understand the marriage. When, when, it, it's crazy because I, I, I really believe in what I'm about to say. Um, and I think a lot of people could stand to pay attention, mm-hmm. right? When we were in grade school, we were told to show the work, mm-hmm. right? When we did a math test, yes. right? And we were upset because we were like, Miss Johnson, I know, I know, thirty-two times three is is ninety-six. That's right. easy. Right. And Miss Johnson would would say, "I need to know you know how to get to that, right?" And I think in paying attention, I say this to my kids all the time. I say, "Math is not right." You, you, uh, Dad, I'm never going to isosceles triangle and and the square root of that. I'm never going to use it. Math sharpens your mind for problem solving. That's what math does. Mm-hmm. You're going to need to use basic math your entire life. You might never run into an isosceles triangle. <laughs> you might never have to do long-ass division or whatever, but you'll know how. Mm-hmm. And I liken that when I say pay attention to what we're talking about when it comes down to marriage and relationships, right? That relationship that Kev is talking about is showing your work, right? And what we're talking about over here is the, but I know how to get there. Mm-hmm. You don't. 
-hmm. You don't. You got to prove it. You got to take the time to prove it and go on that long division journey, mm -hmm. right, to get hung up on a certain thing mm -hmm. and ask Ms. Johnson for help, mm -hmm. your therapist, if you mm -hmm. will, right, and figure out, okay, the, the math ain't mathing mm -hmm. or the math is mathing. Mm -hmm. And now guess what we can do? We can now talk about marriage, mm -hmm. right? And that's just promoting you to the next grade, the, yeah. the, the, the next math mm -hmm. problem, because Ms. Johnson is going to say, because you know how, I'm confident you can do this next problem, mm -hmm. right? I know you know how. Mm -hmm. And I think our, our partners and the people we're getting in relationships with deserve to know that we know how mm -hmm. and, and stop understanding that, but well, Kev's married. I could just ask Kev. Mm -hmm. that, that, that makes none of the sense it in the world. It doesn't. <laughs> Kev's mm -hmm. not married to you. Mm -hmm. And you ain't Kev. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we could all stand to pay attention. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm I'm going to switch it up for a minute. Um, and we're going we gonna to jump back into that. Uh, but we got to talk a little bit about um, one of our one of our trending topics. And and our trending topic this week kind of overarches. A lot of um, a lot of topics that popped out. So pre-show, mm -hmm. we were talking about um, cancel culture mm -hmm. overall, and and one of the points that Tina made was um, some things need to be said. Some things are facts, mm -hmm. but some people, like all of us who have you know clients and family and friends and people who depend on us and, and situations that involve other folks. We even have to be careful what we say up mm -hmm. here, right? Because we even have fear of, well, this client might not work with me no mm -hmm. more or whatever, right? So the question I pose, either one of y'all can jump on it first, pause. Um, <laughs> did I just get canceled? You, did I just get canceled, <laughs> right? Might, Talking about cancel culture, did I just yeah, do but, it? <laughs> um, how do, I'm still in Tina's question for the viewers, how do we say the things that are factual or need to be said without fear of being canceled? Kevin, do you mind? Do not. Okay. <laughs> so I know that people are going to vehemently disagree with me. And I think that when we are in conversation, that the best conversations facilitate, I don't necessarily agree. Help me understand. Mm. For me, I honestly feel like when we start to make decisions because we are fearful of the consequences, mm. then our decisions and our choices are skewed. Mm. And then we are in conflict with self. And when we start questioning our own authenticity, then we are not living our very best lives. Mm. Right? So part of me being the amazing clinician that I am, I am very much um, oppression anywhere is a threat to justice mm. everywhere, right? So I align with marginalized groups intentionally, right? It's actually my spirit, right? My spirit says, oh, my God, you're bullying that kid. I'm going to go stand up for them. You don't even know that kid. I'm standing up for them, mm. right? That's just who I always mm -hmm. have been. So I take positions. I'm an ally of the LGBTQ community, IA+. And I'm also very firm on some of my positions regarding the woke culture and how we introduce very young children to the LGBTQI plus community, mm -hmm. right? Doesn't mean that I am oppressing or not for equal access to resources and rights. It just means that I do think that some things our children don't understand mm -hmm. and they should not be prematurely in, introduced to it without mm -hmm. an opportunity for understanding and education from the people who take care of them, their parents. Um, so when we were talking about social media and we were talking about biracial relationships, right? One of my mentors is <laughs> Dr. Delisa in the building. Um, she's very clear, Tina, you can't say those things on your social media because <laughs> they will, you know, not come see you because mm -hmm. they will think that you are biased. And my biography says that I support with racial identity. That means I have a thought. I have a perspective. Um, and I, I do believe that we have this concept of, um, what do they call it? We talked about it. Uh, this concept of it needs to be given to the audience in a way that they can actually digest mm. it, right? And that's fine if my audience is interested in knowing a little bit more. 
So, mm-hmm. Tina, why do you think it's not productive for the black man to attach himself to a white woman who doesn't understand the plight of a black man? If you if you ask me, I'm here to share it. Right. I don't right. want to just put out a, a status, you know, make a social media post and go ghost. I'm actually available for a greater understanding a and discussion. a greater commit conversation. Mm-hmm. But I, I do feel entitled mm-hmm. <laughs> as a grown up to be able to say and what I need to say. I, and if somebody says I don't want Tina to be my therapist, then that's OK, too. Yeah. And I, I got to say on the, on the back of what you said, I think that we live in a day of t- a day and time. Um, I think, you know, selective outrage. Chris Rock said it best mm-hmm. on, on, on his platform, mm-hmm. um, on his show. I think we live in a day and time where people are more interested in the outrage and the clout and the argument back and forth and and that sort of thing than they are the issue, Mm -hmm. right? Can I come up off of this Mm -hmm. is is more um, prevalent than um, that's not what, that's not right and here's why. Because I mean, nine times out of 10, like you said, you're here for a discussion and I'm sure in that discussion, you're going to come off as educated. You're going to come off with some facts and some stats and, and all of those types of things. And that's not what your typical online bully is, is mm-hmm. looking for, right? They're typically looking for repost me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say something outrageous and you're going to repost right. me, mm-hmm. right? So I, I couldn't agree more. Like there's there's so many. We were, we were talking about this conversation started because we were talking about interracial relationships. And um, we were talking about... Oh, can we say that? Can we talk about that? Can we do that? Or to cancel this or cancel this? So we decided to just talk about this in a broader scope. I personally think in America, right, take me anywhere else, not maybe not anywhere, but mainly in America, where we know the history of slavery, we know the history of oppression, we know all of these types of things. My stance is that a black man owes himself to a black woman and a black woman owes himself to a black man. That's my stance, right? I am the most non-racist person you could probably meet. I've, I've grown up in the system. I've lived with multiple white families. Mm-hmm. I understand their culture like I'm one of them mm-hmm. because I spent years in yes. their households. Still call one of my foster, foster moms mom to this day, mm-hmm. white lady, right? Um, I'm not that person. I have a deep understanding, way deeper than most people could could even fathom because I live with so many different families, right? Probably only race or religion I didn't live with was Asians, mm. right? I live with Indians like feather in the, in the hat, mm. in, 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 in the hair, <laughs> I should say. So I'm cultured in that way. But when you know the history of this particular country and you know how families were ripped apart, you know how, you know, women were forced into certain situations, you know why we light-skinned some of us, right? When you know those things... It's almost disrespectful to be on the other side and not say Mm -hmm. there's some allegiance that needs to be necessary to put these families back together, Mm -hmm. right? To to make these families stronger based on what America took Mm -hmm. away from us, right? Now, I'm not going to tell you I agree with that. Anywhere else across the land where people choose a melting pot of of living, Mm -hmm. right? Wherever you are, you chose to be there. You met somebody who didn't look like you or wasn't cultured like you, and y'all fell in love. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I'm not even going to tell you you're wrong in America. Mm-hmm. But my stance is my stance because of the history. Mm-hmm. It's not about I don't like white, I love mm-hmm. black, or none of that. My thing is is just solely based upon the way African Americans were brought to this country and the way our families were divided we should be living. We've been we've been in slavery longer than we've been mm-hmm. out of it now. We should be living in a way that at least reunites and reunifies the black family. Mm-hmm. That's my stance on it. What say you, Kev? Uh, I don't know that I agree. Go ahead, and get canceled. I don't. Nec- <laughs> I don't disagree. <laughs> I just don't share the sentiment. I yeah, think go ahead. I, we want to know your um, sentiment. I just I think people should be free to love who they love. Mm-hmm. But I also think few things can be true. I do also believe that to our point we talked about a white woman's ability to innately get me. Yes, I do believe that would be compromised. Mm-hmm. So an individual would have to uh, reconcile that in their, their relationship. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like, I just don't think it would be, just use me as an example when I'm, you know, just use me as an example. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kev. Yeah. Um, 
I don't I don't think that would be necessarily my responsibility to shoulder that to history in my in my choice of a mate. Mm-hmm. Okay. I do believe that uh, I understand the value of black love and also understand the value of like how that impacts communities. Mm-hmm. But I think in general, um, you know, I think that people should be free to, to love who they want to love, even black women. I think because I think some of the issues facing black women, I mean, the numbers are what they are. Yeah. There's not enough black women, men for black women to marry. I mean, I'll and take so, two. And so I think I'll help. I with think the cause. You and he know, means it. Yeah, I think I think people should be free to choose who they love. I think where we run into issues is when, and I, I typically I've only seen this in my uh, life done by black men is that I think a lot of black men will date outside their race and then use that to demean and. and, and put down black Come women on because now, they have Kev. certain preferences. I think that's Come an on. issue. Yeah. And I think that's ignorant. So my issue is the pursuit. I got right? you. Yeah, yeah, my I, issue I, I is that. the pursuit. And to Kyrie's point, when you talk about the history here, mm-hmm. when you live in America, you're not ingrained to white culture because you mm-hmm. lived with white families. Mm-hmm. You're ingrained to white culture because we live in America. Mm-hmm. And in America, it's all we see. Mm-hmm. We had to petition to see black faces on TV, which is one of the reasons why the Cosbys was so successful. Mm-hmm. We had not seen ourselves right. in that light. And for like not ever here, mm-hmm. right? Um, so when you open up the magazine and the magazine says your hair needs to be relaxed mm-hmm. and you need to look like this because this is the image of beauty, then I take exception with our men identifying that when I arrive, when I make it, that I'm intentionally pursuing mm-hmm. a white woman to be my partner because that is the only image that I know that reflects beauty. Mm-hmm. Those men don't know themselves. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's, it's deeper than just the men who, once they make it, um, I think there's, it, it, it happens no, no matter the, the tax bracket. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think I'm, I'm actually more in the middle mm-hmm. because while I do agree that you should be able to love who you who you want to love mm-hmm. and all of that, I don't I don't take a stance that is um, anyone should not be with who they are with. I don't take mean? that. I, I don't take the stance like when I see anyone. Okay, I got you. Just based on what they have, what they look like, I I'm not internal. Number one, I don't really care. We we on talk show, <laughs> right, so right, I'm right, talking right. about right. it. Let me be. Clear. Um, yeah, let, yeah. let me let me let me be all the way true and transparent. Yeah, yeah. I could give a damn. <laughs> um, but I'm not a person that would ever see somebody and just be like, "Why is that black woman with a white man or a white you know woman with a black man?" I I don't care in that aspect. What I've learned is I've learned what love is, Mm -hmm. right? And I've learned that love is this thing that if y'all got what I know I have, Mm -hmm. I'm in love with what y'all got, Mm -hmm. right? And I don't care. You like it, I love it. I don't care what y'all look like, right? (laughs) If y'all got the real love. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said I'm kind of in the middle because I hear you on the pursuit. Mm -hmm. The pursuit piece means there's something messed up in your head Mm -hmm. that says to you, I need this token. Mm -hmm. And to your point, that's not real love anyway. Mm -hmm. That's not how are we building Mm -hmm. this relationship. That's Mm -hmm. more so I'm going to appeal to X, Y, Z more Mm -hmm. if I do Y, Z, X more. Mm -hmm. Right? So that I I don't agree with Mm -hmm. at all. My my notion of the the ownership of the black family Mm -hmm. is, is what for me says... We've been torn apart so much, we can't do that to ourselves intentionally. Intentionally. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? That's my thing. The other thing that I just wanted to highlight, so I definitely believe exactly what you said because I said I was an activist, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I just kind of want to just note that when a black person um, lends themselves to a white person or any person that is not black, they are still the black family, right? Mm. Just like scientifically, Mm. Because our genes are dominant, and so it's always going to be the black family, right? Right. So I wanted to highlight that because that's important. Um, but the other thing that I felt, uh, I felt you when mm. you said, I want you to love who you want to love. That's how I feel about Serena Williams. Mm. I feel like Serena gave mm. so many black men the opportunity Nichols. 
And they just chose not to take her as a wife. Right. They chose not to build a future with that woman. And then she was like, I'm going to love who loves me. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to love them back. Right. And they have a, a beautiful right. relationship with like, each other. To your point, and I, I get what you're saying in terms of like the black family. And I think if that's what you want to do, and that's like, that's my, that's what I feel like I'm supposed to do. I think that's great. I think, but let's talk about Serena. How many like black women are just like, all right, well, I'm going to give another one a chance. Well, I'm going to do this. I'm going a, I'm to a limit my options for, this, for the sake of people that are showing me, not, not people as in, uh, I'm not even talking about black men, but just for uh, relationships that continually mm-hmm. aren't working for me. Like, right. imagine if Serena just wasn't, wasn't open. Right. And then at, at the same time, when we talk about success, mm-hmm. right, I think one of the other things that we, that we have to remember, right, black folks are by and large, or I should say per capita, if you will, because it's way less than us on in, in America. Mm-hmm. Way less. People don't realize it's, it's 20-something million African-Americans. It's 300 million white folk in, <laughs> in, the com- in the country, right? So that's like, take your block, for example, right? Right side of the street, left side of the street. That's equivalent to there being one black person on every block in America, Right, but when you turn on the TV and when you turn on sports, we dominate. Mm-hmm. Right, when you look at movies, when you look at, and it took a while, right, to really get there. But when you look at things, we dominate. And what a lot of folks don't understand is the reason that we're that way is because when we were slaves, we were breeded to be the best. We were breeded like, oh, Sojourner Smart and uh, Ricky's. 6'4 and, and Husky, we going to mate them so that we could get the new, smart, big nigga, mm-hmm. for, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. That's why you got LeBron James. Mm-hmm. That's why you got, you know, right. all these, 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 the rock. And well, that's all these one of the people. reasons why we have them, because we were already bigger and faster. Well, I'm not, I'm talking about in, in America. I'm not talking about in Africa. I'm talking about when we came to America. They you, brought the best. They See, brought the best. That. Remember but they that, made it the best too. Right, but we were already the best, right? So I don't disagree. The best with the best. I'm, it, Always remember, guys, and this is so important. I love that point, and I'm always here for that conversation, but always remember that the slave masters, the the people who were organizing the right. business, they were in a relationship with people that look like me, that look like mm-hmm. you, right? And they were telling our people, like, bring us your very right. fastest, bring us exactly. your strongest, bring us the best. So when the people who looked like us said, hey, come with me over to the, the water today. Exactly. We're going to, uh, I got an opportunity for right. you. And it, the opportunity looked like enslavement. They were already paid to bring right. the top but echelon. You're imposing my point, mm-hmm. right? It, 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 I'm, I'm on the- So it I'm was on the, easy for them to mate us exactly. with each other because we were already the best of the best. And, we were the cream of the crop. And the point where I was going is now in America, you see the black face dominate what dominates American culture, mm-hmm. right? All, all of the sensationalized mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to forget it ain't that many of us mm-hmm. in America, mm-hmm. right? So I lean to your point when it becomes that because black men, we have, right, a responsibility to better ourselves, period, first and foremost. Mm. But then to the point I'm making for black women, right? And you can't live on the side of I care who you're dating mm-hmm. if you a no good nigga, mm. right? You you can't you, you don't get no choice. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't I get think to choose. The other good thing is when you talk about per capita and how it's thirty million black Americans and three hundred white Americans and you know Asians and um, Latin Latinas and Latinos, but you know a lot of us are in prison, <laughs> right? And <laughs> When you talk about it, like it just really just made me uncomfortable mm-hmm. when you broke the numbers down like mm-hmm. that. And I'm trying to understand why. Okay, we're dominating the NFL, we're dominating the NBA. Why are we dominating the incarceration numbers? Right. And it's easy for people, the, the point I was making, it's easy for people to see most of the NBA is black. The NBA is on TV all the time, right? We all got to watch the same stuff that they put on mm-hmm. TV, right? So you're going to see the black face. In those dominating positions, right? And that's, I'm a filmmaker, right? Yeah. That's an old film trick where <laughs> they would say, 
well, I'm not really going to cast, a, a, you know, too many niggas, but I'm going to make him the president. Mm. He in two scenes. Mm. So now when you watch the movie, it leans itself to say, oh, well, it was, it was a black man in a position of power in this movie. He might have got the smallest salary. Mm. He was on the set for two days. He played the president, but the president had two scenes. He wasn't a star. He was... A, a high ranking role. Mm -hmm. So that's what the NBA is in America, mm -hmm. right? It's like, but LeBron James is LeBron James. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's only one of him, right? Let's that's talk about the, the C-suite executives yeah. and everything else mm -hmm. like that, right? We we off on a on a hell of a tangent on, on the pro lover. Ren, how much time we got? Where we at? It's at an hour and seven. Oh, okay. All right. So we got about 10 minutes, man, to get back, get back on track a little bit. Um, I think we uh we discussed the 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 renewal. A, a little bit of enough. Mm -hmm. um, y'all y'all fought me a little bit on whether it, it, it should be a thing. My stance is still, it, it should, should be, be a thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually do think I'm it's important to renew your vows every 10 years, though. But you talking about vow renewer. That's different. You're talking about renew the marriage. So, I'm talking about, do we got a prenup, right? I'm talking about, at, at four years, I don't have to divorce you. Mm -hmm. I just got to not sign these papers, and I'm free. Oh, you're trying to implement right? a whole nother system. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's, okay. the whole, that's the whole okay. point of the show. Right, yeah. Welcome to the show, so, Tina. So now I see what you're doing here. Honestly, I just... I, okay, so it's maybe not, not that particular system, but I do think people should... If you notice that you're not in love and this person is not in love with you and we're just kind of like going through the day to day, I do think it's okay to leave. I don't feel like you should but stay out of obligation. So this is what I'm saying, right? Kev made a point, right? And this is one point I agree on you with. It should be easier to leave. <laughs> That's what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah, I, uh, if but we it is get, easy. If That's we why get you get 70% people divorcing. Easy-ish, right? <laughs> what I'm saying is it don't cost you nothing. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, let's make it cost money to sign mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. right? Four years go by. I love you so much. Here's my 250. Here's your 250. <laughs> we still married. Yeah, right? and to his point, he said it should be harder to get married. Yeah, the harder to get married. With child, like even having kids. I don't think people should just be oh, no, able to have kids. That's a whole, that's a whole no. There's yeah, a lot of people that shouldn't have kids. That's a whole nother. But what I'm, what I'm saying, though, is I believe your divorce rate mm -hmm. comes down. Maybe not a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm you not talking renew. drastic. <laughs> But if people knew, I have to perform. Mm -hmm. Damn the deaf do us part. I'm, Damn the richer for poor. I have to perform in this marriage or else when four years comes around, my he or she is allowed to say, you wasn't performing, I'm out. It should be that way, though. I agree with yeah, that. I don't think we disagree at all. Yes. Like I'm just saying, <laughs> if that performance is not reflective of a healthy relationship. It don't matter if we can renew it in four years because I, I can't produce a healthy relationship anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you That's still, all I'm saying. I don't even want to wait for four years. Right. If, you're, if it's not giving what it's supposed to be given. But people know that already and it's not working. I'm talking about something that makes it advantageous to the marrier. Well, that ain't it. In the regard of <laughs> marriage is harder because... Like, the, I, I got to keep going back to a job. Your job has, it has milestones. Key it performance, has performance indicators. Yes, it has those things where it's like, you know going in, if I don't do these things, I lose my job. Why don't Marriage needs to be a lot that. like that. I, I strongly believe, let me tell you something about the, the way that my husband loves me and the way that I love him. I just believe that his values and his morals and being a high achiever says... Tina, I love you enough to leave you when you're not meeting me where I need you to meet me mm -hmm. and be the leader for my children that I need you to be the leader for. And if you out here in these streets, like not honoring like our vows, I'm going to go. I believe that he's going to leave and I certainly would too. And it's not because of the renewal period. It's because of my values. It's because of my moral fabric. It's because of his moral fabric. And guess what? We got that unconditional positive regard going on too. But it's still, I'm not just going to stay with the person out of obligation and there's no love here. There's no hard work here. There's no dedication here. There's no, like, mm, no oomph. Like, damn, it, it, it needs to be some spark there. 
And if that's not happening, why are we staying? And I think it should be, for me, it would be less performative. It wouldn't be, it would be less, how do I need to perform on a job? And then how do I behave in a partnership? Mm -hmm. It would be more of that, right? So it would be, because when when we're looking at it that way, it would be what's best for this partnership to continue to blossom and to grow. How does, and are we both engaging in that way? And to your point, we that there those rules of engagement start in the beginning, yes. and we and that's how we conduct ourselves mm-hmm. in a relationship. But I I think that most divorces happen if I'm gonna keep it a bean, because the I do is the whew, I don't have to anymore. And I think that most divorces happen because people wanted the party. They wanted the wedding and they didn't understand what the marriage looked like, what the work entailed. Right. And that's that's a part of what I'm saying. Once people say I do, even when we was in relationships, like when you was a young boy, like, I don't know if it was just me, but it seemed like soon as I, yeah, I'm your boyfriend, shit change just because of the title. Before the title was there, it was a different type of relationship. And I think for a lot of people, to your point, they not thinking about the what happens after I say I do and I'm actually married to this person and I have these obligations within a relationship that you spoke about. People's minds not even there. Mm-hmm. So when, when I say the renewal piece, I personally, and I'm going to put it to bed, we could, we could do some, some final thoughts <laughs> on it. I personally believe in America, that's my mom, my soul body. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I personally believe that in America, Vows need to change. The the religious vows and the things that we've been hearing forever don't apply to everybody. I'm sorry. You and your partner need to look at each other and decide what the makeup of your relationship needs to be and needs to stay for the two of y'all to be happy. And agree upon that. Write that shit down. Mm -hmm. And that is your vows. And... Since it ain't never gonna happen in America, <laughs> make y'all own little four year contract right, you can, somewhere. Yeah, uh-huh. that could be how you can own little like John. That. Yeah, I, I like, like that. that. And I'm with sign that. it. I went there. I'll be a witness. And bring that John out every witness. four years. I got you. And be like, baby, Remember you ain't this? doing number two. <laughs> I'm out. You better fix number two or I'm out. Mm-hmm. And she could be like, well, you ain't doing six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> 10 is a little shaky. So if you want to leave over two, peace. The renewal period is up. In that contract, make sure you figure out where the kid's going to go, who going to, how you going to split the income. That's the, and all again, of that. that's why I all gave Kev the three suitors. Kev ain't got no kids. So that don't, that don't matter to Kev right now. You know what I'm saying? He might got to, uh, he got to uh, do a, a, a renewal uh, a, amendment. Because Kev said, do. first comes love, then comes Marriage and then comes the baby and the baby carriage. Yeah, yeah he's doing. He's. I ain't say that. Kev, <laughs> Kev's keeping all of his options open. You notice he even say, "Well, I think you should have the right to love who you want to love." <laughs> Kev's keeping it all the way open. You understand what I'm saying? He, he was very clear. About um, that. so we got to do at least we we off the hook because we running out of time. Uh-huh. But we gonna put Tina in the hot seat. Okay, cool. She got to do a sounds like a lie, but it's true. The before we end the pro lover show, so this is a portion of our show where Tina, you can't lie. Okay. You're not allowed to lie. Lies are not permitted. Okay. But our viewers got to look at you like you crazy or the people you talking about because it's no way this story you about to tell them is true. Okay. All right. So my cousin was at my house one day. Oh, man. And What cousin? This cousin? That is not my cousin. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And <laughs> she was on the phone boo loving. Okay. And um, I probably asked for something. Yo, you want to get some wings? You know what I'm saying? And she's like, no, that's my cousin. What? No, she ain't got no boyfriend. You want? You want? He wants you to talk to his friend. So I'm like, oh, my goodness. All right. So I get on the, front, the phone. Homeboy like, yo, you know, your cousin, my homeboy, they seen each other. Like, what's up? Like, let me holler at you. Okay, I'm single. You know, I'm all, I was choosing. I was very choosing. <laughs> um, so I started talking on the phone to him. Okay. Um, I'm at my girlfriend's house one day. So me and this guy, we just been on the phone. We ain't really hook up yet. I'm at my girlfriend's house. My girlfriend like, who you talking to? And I'm like, this guy, his name Pete. Um, <laughs> and he like, oh, where you at? I'm like, over my girlfriend's house. He like, oh, hold on. My homeboy here. Put your girl on the phone. I'm like, all right. So now my girlfriend is talking to one of his homeboys. 
So, you know, we just keeping it all in the family, right? Oh, wow. Okay. Winds up meeting up with old boy, and old boy winds up kidnapping me. Didn't let me leave. I went to a dollar holler back in the day. Ooh, we had little dollar hollers. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was going to join on you know what I'm saying? Back in the day. So we at the dollar holler. I'm thinking he's playing. I thought it was a game, mm-hmm. right? And old boy really was dead ass serious. I couldn't leave the crib. So my pager is going so this ham. Not, this not at the dollar holler. This, this is, is at the dollar holler because dollar. it was his dollar holler. Oh, no. So he got you like upstairs and the dollar holler going on downstairs. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm. So my pager going ham. So I'm like, yo, boy tripping. He like, I ain't leaving. My best friend say, what boy look like? So I start running it down what he look like. She like, that's interesting because his homeboy, it sounds like you're describing his homeboy. I'm like, what? Couldn't be. So come to find out, old boy who was dealing with my cousin, mm-hmm. who said, put your little cousin on the phone. Mm-hmm. I want to holler at my cu- my boy. He was the same dude. Oh. <laughs> so he was dealing with my cousin, jumped on the phone. I met his friend, yeah. who he was. I introduced his friend to my girlfriend. He was the same guy. Mm-hmm. And this dude was a menace yeah. to society. Yikes. So, yeah, that... Probably sounds like a lie that I was kidnapped for like two weeks. Two weeks, but it's a fact. Two weeks. Mm-hmm. He ain't let you leave for two weeks. For two weeks. Jesus. So I hope they got this motherfucker off the streets. I hope so too. Oh, you don't know. I don't know. Well, don't after know. the show, we gonna unbeep his name because I need to know. <laughs> um, I need to know who's still in these streets. <laughs> I'm out. I'm glad you're here and yeah, well. Right. 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 I, uh, right. right. Remember I, I told need, you I could write a book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I like you too much now after meeting you, so I don't want to know the rest of the, the details of the story. I hope you whooped his ass and got away and all mm-hmm. of that is what happened, man. But um, it's been a good show, man. It's been a good pro lover. It's always um, a pleasure. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Kev, my, my resident guest host, man. Thank you to you. Um, I'm going to let you... Give your your farewells and tell the people what you got going on first, and then we go to Miss Tina. Uh, well, I do want to circle back to one thing because oh, you used the word embosement, and I thought no, I it was very embos. That was an impressive word. I just want to tell you that you like that. It was, it was impressive. Like we give our children. 50 it was cents. man. That was an impressive she word. Some text, that was you know a big mean? word. <laughs> um, hey man, always a pleasure. Keep up with me on Instagram. You already know at Kev underscore Car, um, and yeah, that's it. That's it. That's a so short and sweet. Tina, how can they hire you? Because oh, you're a you're okay. an active clinician. Um yes. and, and tell the folks a little bit more about you. All right. So I told you guys that my name was Tina Scott. Um, I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. However, I am the host of a show called Tina Talk. Uh oh. I am Tina Talk on all public platforms. And if you want to check out the show, it's every Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on an app called Be Go Live. Um, if you are looking for a clinician, then you would find me on Psychology Today. I am also in the process of creating a curriculum for our school districts. Mm-hmm. Um, It's an emotional intelligence curriculum. So the emotional intelligence is really supposed to support our youth Mm. with understanding what marriage is. Mm. So when they go into a marriage, they understand it a little bit better. I also noticed when I was working in high crisis, high acuity, um, serious mental illness, I always said to myself, like, why don't I get these people until they go to prison, Mm. until they go to the hospitals? So the emotional intelligence curriculum is really early intervention services. So you can reach me at tinatalk at yahoo.com, T-E-E-N-A-T-A-L-K at (laughs) yahoo.com. You still got that pager too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Why are people mad about my Yahoo? Yahoo. You gotta get rid of that Yahoo. <laughs> they got, are you really know, awesome. They, they still have Yahoo. Yahoo email addresses. <laughs> she got that joke. She got emails from the oh, 90s and that joke. You already know. Oh, oh Yahoo. They did not come for me like oh, that. Ozzy, you still on the air. I'm going to call you right back, baby. <laughs> Listen, man. Um, I, 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 You know I got the wrap up. I got people calling me that's here now. Uh I'm Kyrie Terrell, man, but more important than that, we are filming this episode at Potty Time, right? So Potty Time is Philadelphia's first 
full service podcasting studio, right? By full service, I mean all you got to do is sit your ass down and have a conversation. We will do everything else if you want us to, right? Pottytime.com or pottytimephilly at gmail for more information. We look forward to hosting your podcast down here at Potty Time. That's all I got for today. You can find me at Kyrie Terrell everywhere. It's the Pro Lover Show. Remember, man, I'm not a pro because I always got it right. I'm a pro because I always got it wrong. Until now. <laughs> <laughs>